What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can change the size of objects using the different scale functions inside of Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as a general rule, when we talk about scaling things inside of Rhino or really any 3D software, we're talking about ways that we can make things bigger or smaller. So that's gonna refer to like scaling a full object or also parts of an object, which we'll talk about in a second. But first off, let's take a look at the easiest tool to scale things that we have inside of Rhino. Um, it's just the scale tool. So what you can do is you can select a 2D or a 3D object, type in scale and hit the enter key. And so what it's gonna ask for is it's gonna ask for a base point. And so the base point is going to be the point around which everything is going to be scaled. So that's gonna be like the set point in the 3D space. So in this case, I'm gonna click on this corner right here, and then I'm gonna go click on this corner right here. Well, notice how now what that's doing is that's scaling the object relative to the distance between those two points that we set, like this. And so notice how there is an option up here to create a copy of an object or to just scale the object that you have selected. So if I was to move my mouse until this aligned with this point right here, notice how it's going to resize that object uniformly to meet that size. And so the same thing would work with a 3D object. So if I take this object right here, type in the value for scale and hit the enter key, I can pick a base point, I can click again, and then I can move my mouse and click in order to resize that object. So in this case, right, um, if I move this to the midpoint, this object is going to be half as big as it was before. So this is a really easy way to uniformly scale objects inside of Rhino. And so in addition to being able to scale full objects, you can also scale parts of objects. So if I select this object right here, and actually I don't wanna select this object. What I wanna do is I want to do a control shift instead. So I wanna do a control shift and I'm gonna click on this surface. Notice how when I do a control shift and I click on this surface, what that's gonna allow me to do is allow me to select only the face on this side of this object. Well now, if I was to run the scale function and then set a base point, right? And we could find like our middle point if we wanted to do that, but then we could set another point in here. Notice how if I scale that in, the rest of the object is going to deform to match that or if I scale it out. So if I do this, right? Notice how the whole object deforms because we resized one side of this. Another thing to know is if you are working with the gumball tool active, which you can access down here. I can also link to a video about the gumball tool on this channel. But what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to select a surface. So let's say we were to do a control shift, click and click on the surface. Notice how these little boxes right here also are scale boxes. So we can use this in order to scale this up and down by clicking and dragging them like this. And so notice how I can do that in multiple different directions, like this. Or if you click and hold this and then hold the shift key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna keep your scale um, uniform around this central point right here. So if you're looking to do a quick scale of an object, that's a really easy way to do that, like this. Notice how we can use that in order to scale multiple directions or multiple faces at once as well. And so sometimes you don't always want a complete uniform scale, right? Sometimes you only wanna scale an object in one direction. So let's say for example, that we've got this cone. And what I wanna do is I want to make this cone taller, right? Well, if I was to come in here, select it, and then type in scale and try to do that. So if I click here, click here, and then move, notice how this is scaling uniformly right? Well, we don't want this to scale uniformly. We want this to scale in a way that it's going to get taller, but maintain the same base size, right? So there's another tool in here called Scale 1D. What Scale 1D is going to do is it's going to scale your object in one direction. So if I was to select, this is my base point, and then this is my end point like this, and then scale this up, notice how now it's going to scale this whole object, but it's only going to scale it in a single direction like this. So we can use this in order to scale this in one direction. This would also work for like a cube like this one. So let's say that I was to do a scale 1D like this. Well, what I could do is I could select this point right here and then this point 
And notice how I can use this to scale only in this x direction, like this. So I can use this to make objects longer or shorter. And you can do that multiple times. So I can do this again. I can do a scale 1D. And notice how I can use this to scale this so it's not as tall as well. So if you just want to scale in one direction, you can do a scale 1D. There is also a tool in here called scale 2D. What that's going to do is that's going to allow you to scale an object in two directions. So if I do a scale 2D, hit the enter key, it's going to ask me for a base point again. So we're just going to select, we'll select an endpoint right here, and it's going to ask for a reference point. I'm going to click right here in this direction. And then it's gonna ask for a second reference point. But notice what that's doing is that's scaling along two directions. So it's basically scaling along this flat plane. So notice how the height of this object isn't changing. So if we were to go back into this view right here, notice how this is getting wider, but it's not getting taller. But if you were to move your mouse over here, right? So that this was moving in an upwards direction. Notice how then it's getting taller and wider in one direction, but not the other. So. Notice how you can get different effects depending on where you place your mouse in this 3D space. All right, so sometimes you have an object like this one where the typical scale directions don't really work, right? So if I try to like scale this on the blue axis, for example, notice how it's just gonna mess up the direction that it's facing. However, there's a tool in here that allows you to select a plane like this one and then scale along that plane. So you can do a scale um, you're gonna look for scale by plane. What that's gonna ask you for is that's gonna ask you for an origin point, and you need to start by changing your plane from the active C plane to a three point. And so when you do that, what it's gonna ask for is it's gonna ask for an origin. So we're gonna click on this corner right here. It's going to ask for the X axis direction, which is right here. Then it's gonna ask for an orientation point, which we're just gonna set on this corner right here. So you're basically using three points to dictate where that plane is. Well, notice how now it's going to ask me for the origin point for my scale. So I'm gonna click right here to do that. And then it's gonna ask for a reference point, which I can click on, and then the second reference point right here. So notice how I can use this to scale this object along this surface in the correct directions, just like this. So this is an easy way to take objects that are oriented on non um, X, Y, Z directions and scale along those directions. So sometimes you wanna use different scale values in different directions. Well, there's an option here called the scale in U. I don't know if it's red scale new, but if you type in scale in U and hit the enter key, what it's gonna ask for is it's gonna start by asking you for an origin point. So I'm just gonna select the center of this object, but then notice how first we start by scaling along the X axis. So what it's gonna do is it's just gonna scale this object along its X like this. So I can move this and scale it. Well, then it's gonna ask for my Y. And so notice how then I can use the Y axis in order to scale it on, along the Y. And then it's gonna ask for a Z like this. And notice how I can make it taller, shorter, other things like that. So what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to scale along the three different directions one at a time inside of your 3D space. All right, and then sometimes you have objects that are in a 3D space like this, you don't wanna scale the geometry, but you wanna scale the spacing relative to these objects. So let's say I have these objects in here, and we'll go back to our top-down view for this. So let's say that I wanted to make these all a little bit closer together. Well, what you can do is you can select them and then type in scale. And in this case, you wanna look for scale positions. So what scale positions is going to do is that's gonna allow you to set a central point or a point around which those objects can be scaled. But now if I click in here and move this, and then I set a reference point like this, notice what it's gonna do is it's gonna scale their position rather than the actual geometry. So you can use this in order to quickly move objects and put them closer together or further apart. And this actually gets really kind of interesting, especially if you use the copy function, because if you were to use the copy function, you can use this in order to not only create shapes to the inside, but also shapes to the outside like this. And then once you're done, you can hit the enter key. Notice how I was able to create copies of all of those objects in the 3D space using that tool really quickly. So if you wanna move objects relative to each other from a position standpoint, you can use the scale position function.
All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about any of these functions or if there's any tools you'd like to see me cover in the future. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.